morning everybody I am Abby Elizabeth and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel this channel is for Christian women but anyone is welcome to listen so recently I had a question in the comment section about celebrating New Year's Eve New Year's Day and whether or not it's okay for Christians to do so so I wanted to make a short video to answer this because I think many of us are not aware of some of the things that are um, related to this particular cel celebration. So this is part of the Saturnalia festival and the Saturnalia festival is something that is the worship of Satan. So Christians don't celebrate it. When Emperor Constantine made the uh, Saturnalia festival, he renamed it Christmas. It had, it had nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus Christ's birthday. And it was done in order to incorporate Christianity into paganism. And that's exactly what happened. So a lot of people don't understand that the, the rituals and, and practices of these kinds of festivals and feasts have nothing to do with Christianity. Now, in modern Christianity, there are a number of different Protestant and Catholic religions that have a midnight mass or a late evening service wherein the participants reflect on their errors of the old year and then they light candles and so forth in order to to uh, bring in the new year. So it's seen as a time of cleansing from the old and bringing in the new. But the thing is a lot of people don't understand that this is paganism. So in Saturnalia, in the Saturnalia festival, on December 31st, what happened was that the old man, so Saturn, was um, put away and the, the baby, the new year, was brought in. And this is symbolic of the reincarnated sun god. It's not something that Christians want to participate in. And there were various things that were done on this particular day uh, of the festival, the seventh day of the Saturn, Saturnalia festival, like uh, bringing in uh, evergreens and lighting candles. So we can see that it's an extension of what we consider these days to be a Christmas celebration. But there's more to it than that. And so I'm going to address these things. It is also the day of death of an individual known in the Roman Catholic Church as Saint Sylvester. Saint Sylvester was, according to the Catholic Church, the 33rd Pope, but he was the Pope under which Christianity, true Christianity, was merged with paganism under Emperor Constantine. So this Saint Sylvester was the one who presided over the so-called conversion of Emperor Constantine and also over the Council of Nicaea, wherein certain things were, were incorporated into Christianity that are not Christian. The Saturnalia Festival, one part of the Saturnalia Festival that occurs on December 31st, which is the day of this Saint Sylvester's death, that, that part of what happens is wax figurines of a, a mother and baby are, are, um, are given to people and they bring in various symbols of everlasting life, such as wreaths and evergreen trees and so forth. So Christians worship God in spirit and in truth every single day. And we don't have a particular day in which we honor God or in which we reflect on our errors. As a matter of fact, a Christian examines their heart daily before the Lord in prayer. And God doesn't want to be worshipped in these ways. As a matter of fact, he finds it very offensive. We can see this. I want to go first to Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. And I want to read here, starting in verse 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. 
There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Now there's people who will say, well, this is the Old Testament, and we're in the time of the New Testament, which is absolutely absurd, because God doesn't change. He's perfect. He's eternal. And what is wrong to God in the Old Testament is wrong to God in the New Testament. We can see this if we go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, and let's begin here in verse 8. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which were which by nature are no gods. This is talking about pagan religious practices. Let's read this again. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto, unto them which by nature are no gods. This would include Saturn or Saturnalia, Tammuz, the various false deities of paganism. Let's read on in verse 9. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. So here the Apostle Paul is talking about how people who have come into the faith of Jesus Christ and come to know God and are known of God are turning back unto the weak and beggarly elements and desire again to be in bondage. Well, what is that? Let's read on. Verse 10. Ye observe days and months and times and years. So this is not something that a Christian wants to do. And it's human nature to want to have various things happen at different times of the year in order to mark the passage of time. Now, Saturn, the god Saturn in Rome, was the god of time. There was a similar festival celebrated in Greece that where they, they worshipped the god Kronos. And Kronos is the root of the word chronological or time. God is everlasting and outside of time, and he desires a people who worship him in spirit and in truth. When we read in Deuteronomy 18, so let's go back to Deuteronomy 18, and in verse 10 it speaks about an observer of times. This is a, a reference to astrology. So when people look at the patterns in the heavens, the turning of the stars, the cycles of the seasons, they worship the host of heaven. This is deeply offensive unto God. And it's not something that a Christian wants to take part in. Now, there are other things about this festival that are we can recognize right off the bat that a Christian doesn't want to take part in. So I do want to review these things. So let's go to Galatians 5. And let's begin reading here in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In particular here, there's a number here that of, of items here that apply to these pagan Roman festivals and Saturnalia in particular. Obviously, idolatry is one of them, and drunkenness is one of them. But I want to focus on revelings. A lot of 
A lot of us were born into a world where we don't understand some of these words. Revel is a word in the French. It comes from a French word that means to rebel. Revelings are when people do things that are rebellious against God and they're trying to do it in a way where they're incorporating into worship. And this makes it an abomination. So when people worship God according to the ways of the heathen, this is an abomination unto God. It's more than idolatry. It's when you take idolatry and say, I'm going to do the things the heathen did in worshiping the one true God and expect him to find that acceptable. Revelry, revelry is also loud partying, wild fun, noisy partying, carousing. We can see that this is definitely part of what happens on December 31st, which is in fact, which is in fact the day of death of a Catholic Pope, a Catholic Pope, so it's also necromancy. It's worshiping the dead. It's honoring this dead Catholic Pope, the one that was responsible for the merger of Christianity into idolatry and paganism. And this is not something that Christians want to partake of, most certainly. One thing I would say about all of this is that as a Christian, we want to be sober. We want to watch and pray always. We don't want to be partaking of things that will distract us from being aware and awake as to what is happening. We serve an everlasting God and he exists outside of time. And our kingdom is not of this world. It's an everlasting kingdom. And we serve the living God and we worship him in spirit and in truth. So even if this was not a pagan Roman festival, part of the Saturnalia festival, even if it wasn't idolatry and an abomination before God, even if it wasn't worshiping and honoring a dead Pope that was responsible for bringing Christianity into paganism and, and perverting it and corrupting it, even if none of those things were true, we still would not want to partake of this because it's revelry, it's foolish behavior, it's drunkenness, it's partying, it's acting like the world. And why would a Christian ever want to do this? The final thing I want to mention is that the practice of self-examination and then a party to bring in the new year, to bring in this new fresh start. When people do things like light fireworks and blow horns, that is something that was done in the Saturnalia festival in order to banish evil spirits. It was part of a pagan festival wherein people banished all the bad things, all the evil spirits of the past year so that the new year could be be begun afresh. So even when we think of it in terms of the world, that the world isn't going to a, um, a, a midnight mass or they're not going to um, some kind of, I forget what it's called here. I wrote it down just a moment. They're not going to a watch night service. So Lutherans do this. People in the Anglican church do this. And there's many others. The Methodist church, I believe, do it as well. So the watch night service and the midnight mass that the Catholics do is not something that people in the world do, but they still shoot off the fireworks and blow the horns and they're worshiping Saturn, which is a Roman word that we can understand as the worship of Satan. And Christians don't worship Satan. We don't act like the heathen, even if it's on the 4th of July. And as far as I know, the 4th of July is not part of Rome, although it might be. I just don't happen to think it is. But the use of fireworks is still something that pagans do in order to cast away evil spirits. And this is the use of witchcraft and, and divination. It's the worship 
of fallen gods that fallen angels that are not gods and as christians we don't ever want to look like the world we are a, a peculiar people who are called to walk as lights in the world we don't ever look for an excuse to partake of a certain celebration a certain day rather we are always sober always walking in holiness always testifying of the truth of jesus christ and the way of salvation we don't allow ourselves to be distracted with these foolish yearly celebrations that that the pagans indulge in and the people of the world indulge in rather we stand apart now we don't speak to people harshly or in a mean way about it and we understand that they don't know what we do so for example if someone invites us to go to a new year celebration we simply say no thank you we say, as christian women we say no thank you that is not something that i would enjoy doing um, thank you for thinking of me but i don't partake of that i'm a christian and then if they have more questions we can tell them why you can use the scriptures that i used in this video and i will list them in the description box for you below may the word of god go forth today and edify many in Jesus' precious name, amen.